Hi, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the World of Fun Academy. And I'm sure guys, wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you must be happy. Uh, just a minute, I have a very important call. Ah, yes, sir. Sir, he came from Usha. He said that he will not take me there. He has put it in the whole society. This is my third geyser. He has put it in the first one. He said that he will not take me there. One second, one second. He has put it in the whole society. I'm so sorry guys it was a very urgent one so sorry once again thank sorry for um, delaying but uh, it was a very urgent call and uh, sometime you have to do which you never wanted to do so sorry guys once again and thank you so much for joining an academy and as I always say that an academy is one of the greatest platform we have in the world which has really democratized education education system has been democratized and now anybody any graduate or under undergraduate living in Delhi not living in Delhi they are wherever in this world and their Indian citizen can prepare for the civil services if they have the eligibility and that is because of this an academy so because of this an academy we are like uh, able to provide impart our knowledge whatever we have to this entire world and that this credit goes to an academy so thank you so much once again for doing this and uh, I hope we are able to do this to this world and it is it is possible only because of this uh, an academy so that is why I always call an academy as you know a, a silent revolution so I say silent revolution and uh, because of this it has been possible it is possible to uh, uh, prepare civil services wherever you are in this world so thank you guys once again so in this process of this special class which we are going to share today on an academy and i have taken one of the topic called the theory of before i start my class 
let me introduce myself my name is dharmin and uh, if you want to join these classes uh, you can uh, use this code if you want to join these classes you can use this code called dso21 dso21 is my referral code which is mentioned here you can see that and uh, <clears throat> my hindi classes starts at 11 am in the morning and english classes starts at 8 30 in the morning so 8 30 morning we start our hindi class and uh, uh, Hindi class and uh, English class we start at 8.30 morning and Hindi class at 11 a.m. So thank you guys. In this process I am going to teach today that uh, theory of evolution of family. As you know family is one of the topic we theory of evolution theory of evolution of family theory of evolution of family so guys uh, this is one of the theory as you know that uh, since we are born and brought up in a family we love to live in family so it's a, not only a, a topic of sociology but it's a matter of general curiosity that every time everywhere so to whenever there is a like a, you live in a family it's a general curiosity not only for the upsc but also for the UP PCS and Bihar PCS and all the PCS where this is a very integral part of the syllabus. And it is a matter of general curiosity also that in the family where you're born and brought up, you want to know that how it has evolved. So before I tell you what exactly the theory of family is, before that I would like to introduce you what exactly family is. So family, famul, uh, there's a Latin word, that is a Latin word, called famulus famulus from where this word family is arrived so basically the literal meaning of it's a latin word famulus from uh, which this word family is derived so famulus is a word where which like you know uh, the literal meaning of it is like uh, father father like it's a father mother children children and and the slaves a group of father mother children and slaves used to be called as families and from where this word family is derived so family can be you know like defined as a group of person a group of person person either either associated associated by blood or marriage blood or marriage lives together lives together and share household responsibilities household responsibilities responsibilities can be called as family so friends let's say two friends share a common room they are not family because neither they are associated with blood nor they are associated with the marriage so a group of person lives in a common house and share that household responsibilities either associated with the blood or marriage that is why it's a hostel or it's a roommates or you're a flatmate like many people in mumbai delhi chennai they work together they live in a oh, one room or one flat they share kitchens and all still they are not family so family they should share a common household and and they must be either related with the blood either a blood relative or a marriage then only it will be called as family so basically family is considered to be an uni universal institution boys as you know it is found everywhere in the world but uh, there is a sociologist called gp murdoch gp murdoch is a sociologist who studied 250 societies of the world 250 societies 250 societies of the world and he believes that 
that society is an universal institution it is universal it is a universal institution society uh, family is an universal institution history 250 societies of the world and uh, reached to the conclusion that it's a universal institution that means it is found in all societies but he also said but he also said one thing that the structure of family is not universal as you know that somewhere it is found nuclear family somewhere joint family somewhere extended families there are many types of families we have so there is a structure of the family is not universal i repeat structure of the family is not universal structure of the family is not universal it's not an a universal but he said that the function of the family function of the family is universal it is universal and he identified he identified four universal functions of the family he identified four universal functions of the family first is sexual gratification sexual gratification okay second is reproduction reproduction third is economic cooperation economic cooperation third is economic cooperation and fourth is fourth is socialization he called it education he called it education for you understand it is upbringing or in sociology we called it socialization so he identified these four functions universal functions of family sexual gratification reproduction economic cooperation and education which he called as like uh, we called it socialization and he called it education so these are as i said friends and uh, as i said that the functions of the family are universal not the structure there is a thinker called malinowski i hope you may have heard his name uh, borislav malinowski borislav malinowski borislav malinowski said that family is such an old institution that human being human being have carried it from uncivilized uncivilized era so when man was not civilized even when man was uncivil living in uncivilized era from there they have continued this family into the civilization that means even we were when we were not civilized even that time we had a family even that time we had a family friends so look at like how uh, how old institution it is now let's come to uh, like uh, from where this family has originated so there are three popular theories uh, though we have many theories regarding evolution of family emergence of family but if you look at the theories of evolution of family theories of evolution of family largely we have three theories largely we have three theories one was proposed by l h morgan l h morgan and he said consanguinal theory consanguinal theory i will explain you this word is sounding little you know it's a sociological term for blood relatives blood relatives we call it consanguinal relatives blood relatives second is e a westermark e a westermark and third is bright fault bright fault so largely friends uh, many thinkers have tried to understand from where this family has evolved and there are many theories but largely in sociology these three theories are very popular proposed by lh morgan 
his consanguinal theory, E.A. Westermark's patriarchal theory, and Bryford's matriarchal theory. So let me come with one one to one. So one is L. H. Morgan. L. H. Morgan's theory is known as theory of you know like consanguinal theories. Why? He said that the family started with the sexual relation between the blood relatives. I repeat, he said the family started with the uh, sexual relation between the blood relatives. That is called consanguinal theory. He identified five stages. He identified five stages of evolution of family. He identified five stages of evolution of family. First, he is called he said first is first stage is he called it consanguinal stage consanguinal stage in this stage it is that brother and sister brother because there was no one in the world there there was no society when the when the human being started to evolve like there was no man no people in the society so initially the blood uh, brother and sisters they came into a relationship when brother sister came into a relationship from where the children came children came from the sexual relation between brother and children and from the first stage from here the family started so family started with the brother, sister and their children. So the brother and sister had a sexual relationship because there, there was no other people in the world. There was no one to meet with each other. So it is like the brother and sisters met from where the children were produced and here the family started. This was the first stage of the family. As the family grown, second stage come, which he called as Punalua. Second stage is Puna Lua. Puna Lua stage mein what happened? It was a group marriage. It was a group marriage. Group marriage. Group marriage. What happens in that? Ki when a number of like in the last uh, first stage, let's say when a brother and sister have a sex and they let they produced let's say around 10 10 10 children let's say 10 children, like five boys and five girls so these five boys and five girls all can you know all they can meet with each other there was no sexual you know monopoly that this is she's my wife or he's my husband kind of a group of all women can meet a group of all women and from so that this stage, this was the second stage of evolution of family, which is called as Punalua. And in sociology, we called it, it was a group marriage. The all members, all male and all uh, female of that group can have a sexual relation with each other, which led to the expansion of the family. So obviously, when a, there are a group of boys and girls, they are interacting with each other. So obviously the number of children will be higher. So uh, this is the second stage. In third stage, he called at syndesmian stage. Sorry, syndesmian stage. In syndesmian stage, it was little more advanced than group marriage. Uh, like uh, as you know, you have, uh, Lord Krishna. Uh, if you look at the characteristics, Lord Krishna's stage was Sindhasman stage. In this stage, what, what was happening? Though there was a husband and wife, there was a husband and wife, but there was no sexual monopoly over each other. Though there was a husband and wife, ab aage the. Ye meri wife hai, ye mera husband hai. but there was no such sexual monopoly. Wo, they were like in, they were in like you know having a sexual relationship out of them their marriage also if you uh, know that lord krishna is having only one wife that is rukmini but he was having gopia and all kind of things so that is what that was the syndesmian age in this syndesmian age husband and wife concept evolved but there was no sexual monopoly over each other so in syndesmian age husband and wife was there look at husband and wife was there 
but there was no sexual monopoly no sexual monopoly this was the third step mono monopoly there was no sexual monopoly no sexual monopoly in this stage this is the third stage so the first stage was brother sister second stage was group marriage third stage was husband wife but no sexual monopoly in the fourth stage then it came polygamous marriage polygamous family polygamous polygamous family in polygamous family means either man married more than one woman this is called polyandrous or a woman married more than one man this is called polygamous family so two types of family in the fourth stages evolved out of polygamous means multiple marriage a man married more than one woman or a woman married more than like you take mahabharata pandavas were polyandrous one woman were having more than one husband and then you must have seen some muslim communities they practices polygynous that one man is marrying more than one uh, one woman so in the fourth stage a new form of family evolved and that is called and that is called polygamous family that was the fourth stage and fifth stage was monogamous marriage which is present now monogamous fifth stage is monogamous one husband one wife and that is this led to the children and all so this is called monogamous family mono gamous family monogamous means one husband one wife and their children is called monogamous family so friends lh morgan has talked about five stages of evolution of family first is let me start first is consanguineal family first stage is look at first stage is consanguineal family that uh, sex between brother and sister second is group marriage punalua second is group marriage punalua third is syndesmian there was husband and wife but no sexual monopoly third stage fourth stage is polygamous uh, family build up because of the multiple marriage multiple marriage and finally the last one is last one is monogamous family that one man one woman they married and which led to the beginning of their family which is presently practiced in most of the society so this is the lh morgan's theory of you know consanguineal theory that the family started with the sex between the blood relatives this is the first theory friends second theory is proposed by e a westermark e a westermark wrote a book called book the history of human marriages the history of human marriages the history of human marriages and he believed that the family emerged out of male jealousy this is a very famous word family emerged out of male jealousy this question comes in objective exam like net jarif and lectureship that e a mr mark believes that that the not only in the human being but even in the animals those who are male even among the animals those who are male and whomsoever female they likes any female they like they don't want other male to be there they don't allow that woman to come around that female this tendency of jealousy is not only found among the human being but it is found among the all living being that any male who is attracted towards the other female you must have seen on uh, geographic channel and national geographic channel and discovery channel bit lion or tiger or deer what's over they fight with each other so any male who is attracted towards another female 
they never want any other man to come around that female because of the nature of their jealousy. They are jealous. You must have seen that among the lions and all. There is one lion and there are many lionesses around that. The, that females do, do not have jealousy according to this theory. Though I believe that this is found in any anyone. But he believes that it is the male who are jealous that no male should come around the woman. That they are female. And that is why they started doing marriage to these females from where the, from where the family started. So he said that a family is the result of male jealousy, that male do not wanted any other male to come around that woman, which led to the which led to the emergence of family. And from here family started. So family is the result of male jealousy, according to according to E.A. Westermark. Okay? So, question also comes that uh, male jealousy led to the emergence of family. Whose theory is this? It is the E.A. Westermark. He proposed this in his book, The History of Human Marriages. And the third theory was proposed by Breifold. 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 As a, another thinker, he wrote a book called The Mothers. He wrote a book called Mothers. He wrote a book called Mother. Unlike uh, L.H. Morgan and E.A. Westermark, he believed that the initial family which evolved was a matriarchal family. Initial family was a matriarchal family. Why he said so? He said when there was no family in this world, like let's say everybody was, you know, like uh, the food yard or the hunter, nobody had a permanent settlement. So whenever the man, man used to meet a woman, so obviously when a man and a woman are meeting with each other, they used to get pregnant. So the, the woman used to get pregnant. But man is not staying. Once after having relationship like animals and they used to move wherever they want to go. So the woman stayed alone and then after that they had a children. So initial family was mother and children because man was not staying. Man after sexual relation they used to move on. So initial family was like mother used to produce the children. Initial family was mother and children. And later on, the man joined them. So he said that initially the family, the structure of family was woman and her children. And her children. And later man joined this family. So initial family was a matriarchal family which consisted, consisted of woman and her children. And man joined it later in the evolution. So in his book, the mother, he wrote that initial family was a matriarchal family and it began with, you know, it began with like mother and children, later man joined it. So these are the three popular theories proposed by L.H. Morgan, who said that the family began with the sexual relationship between the blood relatives. Second was uh, E. Westermark, who said the family emerged because of the male jealousy, and Breifold said that the initial family structure was a matriarchal structure because initially man and woman met, but man didn't stay in their life. So initially the children was produced by the woman; they were kept by the children. So the initial family was mother and their children, and later man joined that structure. So initial family was a matriarchal family. These are the three theories, friends. Now, uh, obviously, because as you know, I have told you that Malinowski said that the family was something which was introduced during even the when we were uncivilized. 
so since there is no books or like we do not have any literature or any theory or any concrete evidence that which can which can claim that this theory is more appropriate or every th all the three theories have good logic and all have their own validity so it is uh, 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 there is a thinker called sir henry main sir henry main said that the very famous line said by Henry Mann. Henry Mann, after hearing all the theory, he said, as a very famous line, that it is difficult to accept or reject any theory, any theory of evolution of family any theory of evolution of family because because all have all have their own valid all valid logics but he said one thing he said ki, it is very difficult to accept some theory or reject something but at least he said ki, one thing i can say is that ki, the initial family initial family must be must be a patriarchal family well, he's not accepting either L.H. Morgan's theory, <clears throat> neither he's rejecting uh, Westermark theory, but somehow he's rejecting Bryford's theory because he's saying that mother and children would have survived in the past. Because unlike, you know, human children are so dependent for many years on there. It's not, not like animals that they can stay with their mother. Because any other animal, the day they born and they start, you know, grazing themselves, then they start walking themselves and running themselves. But human beings, children, they remain dependent for many years on the family. And if the mother is too much involved into the children, they, how she will, uh, you know, arrange their foods and all kind of thing. So he said that without men, a family could not have survived in the past. So I'm not saying this theory is right or this theory is wrong. That is very difficult to accept or reject any theory. But one thing I can say is that, that the initial family must be a patriarchal family. family Without man, uh, you know, the family may not have been possible in the past. So he's saying that the first initial family must be a patriarchal family. And he's giving the logic that don't see the uh, animals because animals, children can live even without anybody. Because the day they are born and within a few minutes and few seconds, they start grazing and running and all this thing. But it's not with the human beings. So mother or survive kar sakte the piche. This is what logic he is giving. So he is saying it is very difficult to accept or reject any of the theory. All have their very logic. Even I, I am finding patri matriarchal theory also very logic. But then one thing is right ki yes, yaar, bachche, maa bachche koi palte rege, to usko khana wana kon laake deta hoga. So there must be a man. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir Henry Man is saying. So guys, this is what um, more or less uh, I try to make you understand in a simple language, okay? Because there are many theories and the family marriage kinship is a very integral part of the syllabus of UPSC. And not only civil services, but also the state pieces and lectureship, then the NETGRA. So I have picked up one of the common topic, which is like useful at different places of your exam. Because most of the people, those who give UPSC, they give their PCS also. So I try to take a topic which can be helpful to write a good answer of your uh, choice. And uh, in that process, at least I try to make you understand. So guys, this is what uh, uh, my understanding of family evolution of family is. And uh, I would like to uh, invite you that if you want to attend my optional classes, in a plus course, easily join. Uh, 
sorry uh, so you can easily uh, join me by uh, my code is d s o 21 my name is dharmendra dharmend kumar and uh, i am a plus educator of sociology optional uh, in both medium hindi medium and english medium my hindi english medium class starts at 8:30 morning every day and 11 am i starts my hindi medium classes so guys this is from my end and i would like to invite you as i said sociology is a very 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 popular option you must be knowing because sociology is a very popular and it is one of the most successful option we have around 10 percent of the people those like you know get selected from this option and it is and sociology do not requires any background it is very 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 helpful in all the four paper of js be it ethics or be it is a first paper be it is a second paper first paper indian society comes from sociology second paper social justice is almost all sociology third paper we have uh, relatively the role of sociology in the third paper is not that strong but very uh, partial and fourth paper lot of question also comes from sociology in the paper of ethics and all ac 250 marks is directly come from the second paper of sociology and interview whatever sub option you have some uh, you know like 20 30 percent of your total time in interview also goes on the social issues what is going around in your society be it a weaker section be it women be it on many other social levels and all so it's a very you know like a multi-dimensional subject multi you know like it's like an all-rounder subject it do not require any background anybody can take sociology so if you are new to upsc field if you have not decided what to take you can easily attend this youtube classes to understand whether you are understanding this subject good you are not understanding this subject good and if you have a, like you are understanding what i am saying if you are enjoying this subject matter if you are liking this kind of subjects you have liking for the social issues and from in a society where you live this is a very very good subject for you and i am inviting you please join my plus class and you can use the referral code dso21 and you can by using this referral code dso21 you can get some good discount also there and if you're getting the good discount by the saved money you can buy all the good and expensive books and you can have a lot of you know so thank you so much for watching me guys and uh, once again keep stay blessed and uh, keep shining thank you goodbye and good